The thing that appealed to us most about the Banner Saga's setting is that it replaces the usual steampunk JRPG or Western Tolkien fantasy in favour of a universe inspired by Norse mythology. It's a pretty grim tale. The returning dredge are cutting a swathe across the world, pushing already strained alliances to breaking point. The sun has vanished, and there's a deeply foreboding end of days feeling in the air, which brings out the worst in many of the people you meet. But it's all softened by a gorgeous cartoon art style that makes us think of old Disney films from the 50s and 60s. As your motley crew makes its way from ravaged town to bustling city to bleak wilderness, the view pans out to a side-on portrayal of the journey, highlighting the scale of the land. But while the storytelling and universe building are the true triumphs here, the Banner Saga also plays brilliantly. The main part of the game is a kind of interactive choose your own adventure tale, complete with multiple choice sections that affect the path of the narrative. The decisions you find yourself making are never as easy as simple right and wrong, and there can be dire consequences for even a seemingly noble act. As you traipse from point to point, there's a light management element that sees you eking out provisions and deciding where to spend the game's single versatile renown currency. The battle system takes the form of relatively small-scale isometric turn-based scuffles. It hinges on the two gauges that each combatant has, strength and armour. Strength represents both your hit points and your attack power, so taking a chunk out of an opponent's health also weakens their ability to strike back. This makes battles a balancing act between chipping away at your opponent's defence and going for the jugular. There's so much more to discuss about the Banner Saga, its memorable soundtrack, its nuanced character classes, and its sparing but effective use of voice acting, but all you really need to know is that it's a truly top-class game. This PC conversion isn't quite perfect on iOS, though. The controls in the grid-based battle sections in particular suffer from frequently sticky unresponsive square sections, and a slightly cluttered battle menu. Performance can also be a little stuttery, and the loading times are a tad on the long side. As a game, it's unforgiving in certain ways, deeply unusual in others, and requires a little patience before it really all soaks in. But when it does, and it will, you'll find one of the most richly rewarding iOS games of this or any year. This has been James with AppSpy.com. We review, you decide.